Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. Terrence Crawford returned this weekend. This is what he did. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing, right? Watch this. Boom. But let me tell you, although he had a, I mean, what some people are calling a, a good performance, other people are saying this performance showed Terrence Crawford is the pound for pound best boxer today, right? There are some, some things that have surfaced that I think we need to talk about. And these things, some of it's going to be fact. And other things is just going to be a conversation piece. But if you've been keeping up with Terrence Crawford and some of the facts that have surfaced surrounding the Avanasian fight and some of the rumors and there's other things are just more conversation piece. Um, you, I think you're going to enjoy this video. Okay, so, so, so first thing first, right? Let's talk about those gloves. Now, this is a fact. Everlast came out and said that there was some defective leather used on a batch of gloves. As a result, those gloves that were defected, uh, had a defective, le defective leather, um, were susceptible to tearing and to, to be damaged very easily. And supposedly, the gloves Terrence Crawford was wearing was a pair of gloves from that defective batch. Okay, now this is a letter that came out from Everlast. It's out there. If anybody wants to Google it, I didn't go and pull it up. I read it. And I said, man, you know, what a what a coincidence. Yeah. Matter of fact, while I'm talking, because so many people think, while I'm talking, there's so many people who think that um, there's a lot of BS that gets, you know, posted on here uh, from different guys, you know, on YouTube, and um, people think sometimes a lot of us maybe that we lie, um, but, but I'm not. I'm definitely not one of those guys. I like to get my opinion on some things, but um, I'm gonna show you right here. Right, it's not my opinion. Okay, this is right here is the uh, is that note from Everlast. And they say here how they take safety and performance seriously. And you can see, let's see. Mm, the top priority is to ensure that every fighter who uses their product has a safe and secure experience. And then in that second paragraph, that first line in the second paragraph, right? Let me make this a little bit bigger. I know some of you guys are looking at this on your cell phones. During the development cycle of the custom fight gloves used and Crawford versus Evanesian, a batch of defective leather was used in production, resulting in a malfunction during the competition. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and leave that there. All right, you can go out there and pull it up. I just Googled it real quick, it's all over. So you can just Google Terrence Crawford Everlast, boom, it'll pop up. So you can see right there that Everlast was quick to issue a statement and to try to explain what happened to the gloves. But my thing is, okay, we'll give Terrence Crawford a pass for that. But the way those gloves were tearing, okay, at the thumb, this part of the hand, at the thumb, you know, over on the, across the, the fist area, you can't help but wonder, right? How how poor was the quality of the leather used to make those um, custom fight gloves for Terrence Crawford and other gloves that may have been used with that same defective leather that resulted in a poor product, right? The overall quality and integrity of the product. So. You would, for me, right, I say 
because the is seeing in his team, they want that, they want that uh, knockout loss overturned. They want it overturned, like they feel like they were cheated. And see, and this is what happens. Like I did the video the other day. This is what happens when you have incompetent people refing a fight or sitting on the sideline. Um, they, they were the uh, commissioners, I guess. I don't know what those guys who were sitting on the side of the ring were. I think they were part of the commission, boxing, uh, the, the Nebraska Boxing Athletic Commission. But when the referee, she, first she should have stopped the fight and had the glove change, right? She didn't do that. She didn't know what to do. People are saying that that referee was new. Okay, I don't know that to be true or not. But what I do know is she, she missed an opportunity to make the right call. She goes over there to these to 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 to, to Larry, Larry Moe and Curly, three guys in the Nebraska Athletic Commission. I'm assuming that that was their position. Position shows them the glove, and they all have that deer in the headlight stare on them. Waiting for someone else to make a decision or say something. So there's really no dialogue that takes place. F it. Keep the party going. Terrence Crawford turns around, keeps fighting with his defective glove where the damn cushion is coming out and everything else. He goes on. That same glove that was very defective is the same same glove on the right hand. That same glove is the on the hand that Crawford used to get the Van Asien out of it with the knockout hook, right? So Vanessee and his team, they want it overturned. Now, did Crawford cheat? There's been all kind of conspiracy. Oh, man, you know, it's tied to Kinahan and it's the mob. And, you know, uh, they, 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 that, that glove was supposed to be used for Earl Spence and all kind of stuff, right? Look, I'm not here. I did a video on that. I think it's fair to... I don't think Crawford did anything to cheat. But I, I, I think... It's absolutely understandable for people to wonder, okay? Because you tell me, right, when have you seen in a boxing match for a fighter to have defective equipment in the ring? I don't care if your, your shorts rip. If the, if the strings are hanging, come loose on your, on, your, on your shoes, right? They tape it up. They do something. They don't let you fight with defective equipment. So I don't care how inexperienced this judge was. Or the referee was, she should have known. Like, I'm sure whoever's watching this video right now, I'm sure even you would have known. All right, something's not right here, okay? But for that judge not to act, that that that, I think people are uh, are justified in saying there was corruption. Uh, they were trying to set Crawford up to get a vicious knockout. Now I'm not saying that's true. What I'm telling you is, people look at that's what people are gonna do now. They're gonna look at that and say, it's gotta be foul play. It's gotta be some home cooking. All right? It's just like when Amir Khan went down there into DC and fought Lamont Peterson, and that referee was robbing. I mean, he just stole that fight from Amir Khan. That's the same referee that was in on, um, he was the one ref in that fight with uh Cologne, Pritchard Cologne. I forgot that guy Pritchard Cologne was fighting. They hit him with all those damn rabbit shots. That same referee, right? Yo, that guy's poison. It's because of him that, that, that Pritchard Cologne is in the position he's in right now. That referee is rogue, man. That same referee is the one who ref that damn American Lamont Peterson fight. That referee is poison. So, so, so what I'm saying is when you talk about home cooking and stuff like that, I'm not saying for Crawford that that's what happened, but I am saying I think people are justified to feel a kind of way and to even mention that, all right? So right now it looks like Everlast just gave him an out. Hey, it was just a, a, a bad batch of leather, custom gloves, start to fall apart. But an opportunity was missed to do the right thing there in Nebraska. So now Van Asien and his team, they want it overturned. They felt like they, they feel like Crawford uh, tampered with his gloves and he cheated. And that's how they're going to feel. Okay. So all I know is right now that's being tabled. I don't know if that's going to gain any traction, but it's out there. That's not my opinion. That That's not a rumor. This is a fact. 
It's out there. They're kind of going for his juggler now. Whether he's going to get any traction, I don't know. Okay? So the next thing is, this whole set of talk about BLK Prime, Crawford make $10 million. Crawford lied. He only made a million. BLK Prime looks like there was 18,000 people in the in the stadium. They, they, they sold it out. Ticket sales were phenomenal. Live gate, phenomenal. Exceeded expectations. Pay-per-view sales, according to BLK Prime, exceeded expectations. But supposedly, Terrence Crawford only sold 15,000 pay-per-view. 15,000 on pay-per-view at $40? Come on, man. That's nowhere near $10 million, okay? So the thing is, Crawford, and, and, and see, there are a lot of people out here, right, who feel like, man, why are you guys jumping into this man's pockets? Why are you concerned with how much money he made? Why do you want to see Terrence Crawford lose? And, and I'm here to tell you, nobody, I don't, for me in particular, these topics, a lot of people have an interest in. Uh, boxing, money has a lot to do with boxing. So I think it's fair to talk about money and fight purses. And especially when they make a lot or if they lose, lose money or if they get great endorsement deals. I mean, the, the pros and cons, okay, the ups and downs. But if, if there's an upswell in something positive, we definitely need to talk about it. But when you see that, it's going the opposite direction. We need to talk about it too. So with Terrence Crawford now, this is, these are the things that were said. This is a fact, okay? This isn't my opinion, right? These are, how do young boys say it? Facts, 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 right? I'm giving you facts, right? Remember, they said Avanasian. Eddie Hearn went on record and said he can confirm that Avanasian's team said that he's already been paid, he had already been paid his money like a month out. So I reported that. Avanasi and everyone seemed to be happy. They got paid their money. It's like, wow, BLK Prime looking pretty good. Avanasi and already got paid. Terrence Crawford came out, right, and said he got paid half of his money, $5 million. That's what Terrence Crawford said during the damn interview. I didn't say that. Then he does an interview with Brian Custer and says he's going to get the other half. He said a week before his fight, around a week before his fight, okay? Now, maybe he meant during the fight week, I don't know, but he didn't say on fight night, after the fight. He said the week, a week before his fight. Now, we know when you do an interview, sometimes you, you misspeak, you say things, so I'm not going to hold that against him, but it sounded like he got half of his money up front, and he was going to get the other half somewhere near the fight date, all right? Ten million. But one thing I know, I think I even said in that video, right? I have a couple of friends who fought prof uh, professionally. And there was one, I was talking to one of them, right? He used to fight, uh, he, was, he fought in the Olympics for Nigeria. He uh, fought professionally too. Here in the States, he sparred Andy Ruiz and all that. And David Izon, I know David Izon as well. Uh, he's crazy. Um, that guy, that guy is a problem. But anyway. Uh, my friend who fought for Nigeria, right? He, you know, our kids play on the same AAU basketball team. But he was telling me that he used to get a check in his hand while he was in the locker room before he went out to fight. So the day of the fight, while he was in the locker room, they come give him a check. So he get his money before he went in the ring to fight. Even if he was scheduled to fight and his opponent didn't show up, he would still get his money. Okay? So we had that conversation. I told him, well, damn. You know, Terrence Crawford is already saying that he's, he, he received his money. So I wasn't sure, if, even for a Vanessian, maybe it just went to an escrow to show proof of funds. That was a little uh, a little ambiguous, right? So with him, he's what he was telling me is you get paid the day of the fight. And, and that's how he said that was his experience. That's what he knows. But he doesn't know about anyone else. But he was very adamant that the day of the fight, you get a check, Okay. And I was like, okay, cool. So when Crawford said what he said, I said, all right. So then all this stuff started coming out about 
and, and, and you know, I can't really find this, but I see guys are posting stuff and it looks like they copy and paste stuff. Crawford only got paid like a million, two million for the from BLK Prime. Everyone's saying he's a liar. He's and now my thing is this, I, I don't know if that's true. You know, I don't know how true that is because there's a lot of uh, false information out there. There are a lot of these, uh, a lot of people who are creating bogus Twitter accounts. They're creating these bogus YouTube accounts, and they have so much time on their hands that they'll go and create uh, a Word document, an Excel document. They'll create a memorandum. Uh, they'll copy and paste, or they'll go and copy uh, a contract, an official boxing contract that shows what, um, or a template. They'll get a template. That kind of shows the layout of what a boxing contract should look at, especially something that uh, divulges fighter purses. And they'll come and recreate it and, and, and label it like it's from BLK Prime or Top Rank or from, you know, Matchroom or someone else. And then copy and paste a piece of that and put it into a, a, a paste it into their video and can mislead, you know, their followers. So, so with me, as far as Terrence Crawford only making one million or two million, I don't know what he made but but i'm gonna say this right i just don't think terrence crawford when it comes to that money right i, I just don't think terrence crawford would lie about that like why lie about it, it, making you're gonna get paid about 10 million from these guys you know be okay prime adrian broner coming out saying he's about to you know he says sign the an eight-figure deal for three fights next year, you know. So this is my thing. So there is an excerpt from the uh, in Nebraska, right? The Nebraska boxing uh, rules and regulations, right? It says no contestant will be paid before a bout. That makes you wonder about Terrence Crawford saying he got paid half of his money. No contestant will be paid who does not complete the terms of the contract or who is deemed by the commissioner to be putting forth less than a maximum effort, such as when bouts are stopped for any reason other than the inability of the contestant to continue. Now, when you read that, it makes you wonder, right? What exactly is going on with Terrence Crawford getting paid, did he not get paid? How, how was that allowed? If right there are the rules and regulations, from the Nebraska Boxing Board and Commission, if this is what they're saying, and how's Crawford going on record saying he got paid, so uh, before the fight, the full fight purse, uh, even if it's just half, right? Or whatever, H how is it, you know, how is that possible? So so that, that raises a question. The other thing is, now, I, I'm hearing that this piece may not be true. Some people are saying it's true. Bottom line is, I don't know, but I'm going to bring this to you anyway. It says, finders and vendors will receive all monies owed after revenue from gate, pay-per-views, and sponsor are accounted for. Please be patient with us. We're a new operation. Now, this BLK Prime Boxing uh, um, account on Twitter, they're, they're going back and forth saying that that's not a real account. Some people are saying it is a real account. I, I don't know, but I, I will tell you this. I can't see any platform um, promoting a fight come out and post something like this. It just makes them look bad. So I would tend to think that there's this isn't legit. But then again, like I said, I, I don't know. But this is the this, there's so much question about Crawford and making money. With BLK Prime, it, it makes me wonder, right? I, I I try to find out, you know, just how much, how many pay per views there is a 15k accurate? Like that's that's what I'm finding. I'm looked all over, 15k, 15k. I, I, I you know sometimes you go to uh, different individuals. I'm talking about like the, like Dan Raphael and those guys, their accounts, and they'll they'll have the no kidding breakdown of what the pay-per-view sales were the live gate etc right but from what I'm what I'm what I'm finding it's pretty consistent but the thing is this 
based on the sponsorships, based on endorsements, based on the live gate, based on the pay-per-view sold, right? It still doesn't seem like Crawford would have generated enough money for BLK Prime to pay him an eight-figure payday. Like, it just doesn't add up. And then the next question is, going forward, right? Is BLK Prime going to be able to to host an event with Adrian Broner for like three, paying him like three or four million, okay? Because that's what Broner said. Broner's getting like three or four million for his next fight. That is what's contracted. But this is the other thing. And see, they have people out here, man. Let me tell you, I'm a busy man. Four kids, all my kids are busy. Sports, instruments, you know, academics. We're busy, man. We're rolling over here. But there are other guys who I guess they have no time, no, nothing to do, so they got all the time in the world. Someone went out there and pulled up information showing that BLK Prime may be filing for bankruptcy. Okay. And, and my thing is this: what I'm what I'm telling you guys are facts. They they had something out here, man. It showed the guy's name and everything. It's all out there, man. If you guys want to look it up, right? I'm not going to put that on here. I'm just what I'm doing is bringing you guys information that. It's come to a point now, are, are people really trying to break Bud Crawford down? Is it that they really don't want to see this man win? Or is it that Bud Crawford made a bad decision going over to BLK Prime and he's part of the cover-up? But one thing I'll tell you, right? I think the verdict's kind of out on Bud Crawford. But when it comes to Adrian Broner, Broner doesn't care. Broner doesn't care. Broner's going to speak the truth. Um, so I'm curious to see if Adrian Broner, if his tune changes, because, man, we're about to go into January. He's supposed to fight February 18th, right? We're going to see if his tune changes. Because if there are any kind of going to be any kind of financial snags, impediments, uh, problems, hiccups that's going to preclude Adrian Broner getting what has been contracted, right? Broner's going to come out and he's going to speak about it. But that being said, I, I think I, I think it's... I'm, I'm not sure what the hell is going on over there. You know, I always like to say, where there's smoke, there's fire. And for a guy like Terrence Crawford, man, you know, I I want to hear that his event was a success. I want to hear that he made good money. Yeah, more importantly, I want to see him and Spence fight. Like, that's what I want to see. But when you see all this stuff going on, there's a lot of factual information. There's some rumors, and then some of it just, like I said, a good conversation piece. But when... He's not a, the commission says he's not allowed to get paid before the bout. He says he got paid before the bout. Havana Sian is out there getting paid all of his money supposedly a month out. But y'all don't see how he was able to do that, okay? Crawford pay-per-view sales were low. Crawford issue with the gloves. All of that was just kind of slid underneath the radar. You know, there's a lot going on there. This past weekend for Terrence Crawford, in my opinion, I don't think it was a success. What I think it did was it hurt. I think it hurt Crawford. And I'm being honest with you. And this is my opinion. You may agree, you may not. I think Crawford taking on this Havana Sea and fight. I think, you know, when you when you initially look at something, and if it's not really, it's not well thought out. And if you don't have the right people around you to say, okay, well, stop. Let's kind of, let's sanitize this here, okay? Let, let's let's play devil's advocate because you guys are all seeing, you guys all have tunnel vision. You're just seeing the good of going with an Nevada CN fight, going with BLK Prime, $10 million. You're just seeing all the good that can come out of that. But when you weigh the cost and benefit, maybe it's, is not worth it. So let's look at it if maybe it doesn't go the way we want. 
You go in there, look at all the things that happened. The Vanessian was ranked number six, but look look at the effort he put forth, right? He was trying to cut the ring off and everything, but that was just a glorified sparring session for the most part, okay? Yes, Terrence Crawford is a great boxer. I'm not taking anything from him. A Vanessian has showed that he can be a beast in the ring. Didn't show it Saturday. Maybe it's because it was Terrence Crawford he was in the ring with, all right? So we gotta be fair to both of them, but to me, the whole thing just, it, it was, a, it, I enjoyed watching the fight, but it, it, at the end of the day, Crawford didn't really, he wasn't in trouble at all in that fight. Um, it wasn't even competitive. You know what I'm saying? So you got the money issue. You got a guy in there who doesn't really put forth that much of an effort, glorified sparring match. You got the damn gloves coming apart. Crawford viciously knocks, knocks somebody out. Now the fight's over, and you want you want something like him and Spence getting it on. Crawford, if he felt that he was going to have some kind of leverage going into a fight with anyone, based on the performance of his pay-per-view event and his per performance in the ring, I don't think he has that any leverage at all going into any fight with anyone except for his title. Now, that's just my opinion. Now, if you disagree, leave it in the comments below. But let, let's let's be fair now. T you know, Terrence Crawford is solid, but what what leverage? What is what is he really bringing into the ring that would give him any kind of leverage to drive uh, a seventy thirty split against anyone, or even a fifty fifty split with Earl Spence? So, when you look at it, right, the the greater the risk, the greater the reward. It, it took, it, it, there was some risk involved here. Not as far as with him winning the fight, but risk with him going into negotiations, uh, 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 subsequent negotiations with Earl Spence. So now going to negotiate with whether it's Spence, whether it's anyone, especially if they're a draw, I think Crawford has shot himself in the foot because he's just shown, especially if that 15,000 pay-per-view number is, is spot on, it's just shown that he can't, you know, he, he's, he's just not going to sell. He doesn't, he doesn't generate any money. And Bob Arum is sitting back just kind of, I told you so. Okay. But we'll see what happens with Crawford going forward. But I just think the the event from this weekend is, is just a, a big crap sandwich, man. And uh, I'm having a tough time digesting it. Uh, the information being put out there on the internet, you know, you just kind of try to filter through it. And put a little sanity check on it, man, to find out what, what's legit, what's not, and uh, just have a conversation. So that being said, man, I think I'll leave you guys with that. But I do know for a fact, the fantasy and his team looking to over, overturn that decision. They feel that uh, Craw Crawford's gloves were tampered with. There's an image floating around of some really look old and tattered gloves. Um... I think, at first I said those weren't the real gloves. You know what? Those were the real gloves. Um, those were the ones that Crawford had on the ring because I was looking at another picture. And at first, I just saw the thumb. There's tears all over those gloves he had on in the ring. Like, that's not made up. Like, the man, the, those gloves were no kidding, falling apart. There's no way in the world Crawford should have been allowed to continue fighting with those gloves. And I wouldn't be surprised if Vanessian and his team were able to get that Knockout overturned that fight to a no contest because I'm not saying the padding came out the glove on Crawford, but it was a uh, the gloves were were botched and it should have never been allowed to happen. But um, who knows what's gonna happen? So and the pay per view sales, everything is just crazy. That being said, we'll see what what uh what's gonna be next for Crawford. Crawford is talking about returning next year. I think between April and June, and fighting again. Um, and he's open to fighting uh, anyone. He keeps talking about people who are who are independent. Um, but it does not sound like Crawford is worried about fighting Spence. It just, it just doesn't sound like it, man. Uh, hopefully these guys can make it happen, but I don't know. I'm about to do a video on Al Heyman um, and, and just whether he's brilliant, whether he dodged the bullet, or whether he's bad for boxing, because right now when I'm looking at this, a lot of people are saying that Crawford should have listened to Al Heyman. He should have trusted Al Heyman. But I'm not sure I quite agree with that either. But 
I'm going to do a video and expound more. I'm going to conclude this one, right? But that being said, man, y'all keep cool. Everlast put the uh, article out saying, hey, look, just a bad batch of gloves. Um, special made gloves for Crawford. Another, shouldn't suspect any foul play. Um, Crawford saying he got paid money. According to the rules out there in Nebraska, he shouldn't have got any money until he was actually in the fight and, uh, and, and got through the event. Fantasy and feels like he was robbed. The commission, the referee were incompetent. And now you have this big crap sandwich that we're all trying to digest and make sense of. But that being said, more to come on Crawford, his future, this whole of fantasy and debacle, BLK Prime debacle. And we'll see what uh we'll see what materializes. That being said, y'all keep cool. Shout out to the veterans, people from all seven continents, and the breeze.